all. Welcome to A Fistful of Dice. My name is Matt. Uh, today we are going to be looking at a kind of a fun way to prep for a Dungeons & Dragons game uh, using a pack of Magic the Gathering cards. Um, I'm a big Magic the Gathering fan. Um, my fiance Tila and I play quite a bit together. Um, and so, you know, we don't spend a ton of money on, on packs of cards, but you know, every few times we go to the comic book shop or our game store, you know, we'll pick up a couple boosters. And, and uh, you know, sometimes when I open these boosters, I like to add a little something to the opening process aside from just seeing the cards I get. And I try and use the images and the names and the flavor text on these cards to come up with some ideas for a Dungeons and Dragons session. So I'm gonna kind of show you how I do that now, and maybe it'll give you kind of a fun idea for inspiration. So I've got here a Fate Reforged pack. This is the most recent set. Um, there's another set that's coming out here fairly soon called uh, Dragons of Tarkir, uh, which is gonna be the third set in this block. But this is the most recent set right now, so I'm gonna go ahead and open her up. Everybody opens magic cards differently. I do the uh, open it like that. Flip it over. So the first thing I do is I go through these cards and I just kind of look for art that is sticking out to me. Art that catches my attention, I immediately put it aside. And I'm going to use that. As a sort of guiding post for what I'm going to do here in this session. Oh, hey, got a mythic and a foil. That's pretty cool. I think I already have one of those kicking around, but... Okay. That's pretty cool. I got a shiny. So, the cards that I grabbed out just based on their art is Pilgrim of the Fires, which is a, uh, a golem. Mardu Scout, which is a goblin. Return to Earth, which is an instant card depicting uh, dragon hunters. And Avon Skirmisher, which is a bird warrior. So let's kind of lay these out and see if we can't come up with something here. So right away, I'm drawn to the idea of dragon hunting. OK, so this Return to Earth card. And the flavor text here, uh, the flavor text is kind of like uh, text that uh, sort of plays into the lore of magic or the overarching story. So the flavor text on this card says, Dragons are feared for their breath and their bite, but it is their wings that make them unconquerable. Bring them to earth and they die like any other beast. So that is pretty badass. I like that. So under this dragon hunting thing, I'm going to put a little bullet here that says, uh, specialize in bringing dragons down to Earth. Okay, now that is going to play into this, this Avon Skirmisher, this bird warrior. The flavor text on here says, we do not hide from the dragons that pretend to rule the skies. If we did, the dragons would become our rulers and our way of life would be lost. So here's what I'm thinking. The dragon hunters are bird folk. Bird folk want to rule the skies alone. Okay, so they are dragon hunters. Now we've got a golem and a goblin. Let's look at the golem first. I'm not sure I'm going to take this. I just I like the art on here of this pilgrim of the fires. And I've always been a fan of constructs and things like that. So let's look at the flavor text here and see if anything comes to mind. The most skilled Jeskai artisans can craft imposing golems with such precision that they will last an eternity. The time believed necessary to master the fires of the Jeskai way. So basically a golem that is, that is so masterfully crafted that it will last an eternity. So let's see what I'm thinking here. 
Hmm. All right, so what I decided to do with the golem is I like the idea of it being an eternal creature. But what if the golem was deactivated somehow? What if it was a, a piece of the dragon's horde? And the PCs are trying to find it because this golem is so ancient, so eternal, that it actually carries some ancient knowledge to it. Maybe it's the last remnant of an ancient civilization. Maybe it remembers a great magical cataclysm that happened. Maybe it holds the secrets that the players need to defeat the villain of the campaign. However you want to use that. They need the golem specifically for the information that resides within its metal skull. Okay, so I put part of the dragon's horde, carrier of ancient knowledge. Now the final thing is the goblins. Now this, this goblin art is amazing. The goblin is surfing on the sand using what looks like a, like a tortoise shell or a piece of wood or something like that. It's basically a sand surfing goblin. And the flavor text says, the Mardu all enjoy war, but only the goblins make a game of it. So what I'm thinking is the goblins reside in the desert that the dragon calls home. And they are sand surfers and ambushers slash gorilla fighters. So here's what I'm thinking about the layout of this session. Basically, the PCs uh, learn about the golem in the dragon's horde and they get in touch with these bird folk dragon hunters I whoa that's not how you spell folk bird folk dragon hunters to help them uh, basically track down this dragon um, access its horde and retrieve this golem now maybe the idea is that they're going to convince these bird folk dragon hunters to essentially draw the dragon away from its horde long enough for them to access it. Or maybe the bird folk are going to help them find the horde. Maybe they're going to actually help kill the dragon. It really depends on what level your players are at and what uh, how big of a dragon you want to throw in there. But really, the possibilities are endless. But uh, they also will have to deal with these sand goblins and maybe the sand goblins are affiliated with the dragon you know the dragons are big fans of gaining followers and having little monstrous minions that can do their bidding and and protect them from meddlesome adventurers so maybe the goblins are worshipers of the dragon uh, maybe they're benefiting from the dragon's horde or the dragon's protection somehow um, but in any case the players are going to have to deal with the sand goblins before they can get the golem and the dragon's horde so obviously this session needs fleshing out this is not a complete session you can you know really uh, run this just with these notes i mean i guess you could but it would be kind of difficult but this is a great starting point for a really fun and unique session one that i would not have thought of without this art and this flavor text to kind of help kick start my creative juices and now that I ha have it all written out on paper, I think it's a pretty cool adventure. You've got bird folk dragon hunters taking dragons down from the sky, you know. Um, I, I can think of different weapons and tools that they use to do this. Um, you've got the, the golem. I love constructs. The idea of a deactivated golem that they have to find and turn back on and access information within its head. That's really cool. And I love the sand surfing goblins, man. Coming up with an encounter with these little bastards is going to be so much fun. So this is a pretty fun session, and I came up with it in about 10 minutes after opening a pack of magic cards. Now, you can do this same sort of thing um, just by looking at images online, um, doing some random rolls on a table using your Dungeon Master's Guide or, or other random roll tables online or in different uh, you know, Game Master books. Whatever, you know, Rory Story Cubes are great for this as well. But 
using things like this, if you are, if you're stuck, if you're trying to come up with a unique, a cool adventure to throw at your players, and you're just not sure where to start or what to include, something like this can really help. And it's something that I have greatly benefited from and that fits right in nice and neat in my existing prep process. So um, yeah, the next time you're struggling with a session or the next time you kind of want to, you know, spice things up a little bit, maybe, you know, grab a pack of magic cards or, you know, look online for some images. Let the art inspire you. Let the art and the words that you're seeing, you know, get those creative juices flowing and get you thinking about fun encounters and interactions with your game world. So anyway, guys, it's going to be it for me. Take care and happy gaming all.